Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak 6.0.1 on the iPhone 4, the iPod Touch 4th generation, as well as the iPhone 3GS. Now there are a couple of things I wanted to get out of the way first before we actually get into the jailbreak aspect of this video. Now first I just wanted to mention that of course iOS 6.0.1 is Apple's latest firmware and they released it yesterday. Now as of now, the iPhone dev team has yet to put out an updated version of Red Snow. However, what we're going to do is just point it at the older iOS 6 IP SW to trick it into thinking that we're on iOS 6 when in reality we're on 6.0.1. So I just wanted to say that first to kind of get it out of the way. Of course, I will be making an updated tutorial as soon as Red Snow is updated to a version that can natively support iOS 6.0.1. Also, this is a tethered jailbreak and it only works on, again, the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod Touch. However, what we can do after this tethered jailbreak is essentially convert it into a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak. Now I'll explain that more towards the end of this video after we complete the tethered jailbreak with Red Snow. Now what you need to download first of all is the latest version of Red Snow as well as your iOS 6 IPSW for your device. Now again I did say iOS 6 because we will be using the iOS 6 firmware instead of 6.0.1 even though we are on 6.0.1. Now, of course, I will have a post down below in the more info with download links to both Red Snow and 6.0 for your corresponding device. Now, let me just show you guys here that on my iPhone 4, I am indeed on iOS 6.0.1. As you can see down below for the version, it does say 6.0.1. I'm just inside of the standard settings app, general, and then about. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. So once you have Red Snow and your IPSW downloaded, simply open up Red Snow. Now, if you're on a Mac, what you're going to have to do is either hold down Control or right click on Red Snow. You'll get this menu here and then simply click Open and then it will actually be able to jailbreak your device. Again, that's just what you have to do with this latest version of Red Snow. Now, what we have to do from here is go to the Extras option and then go to Select IPSW towards the bottom. And what we're going to do is point it at our iOS 6 IPSW, which I have right here on my desktop. All right, now that we get a dialog selection window here, we can go ahead and select our 6.0 IPSW. And once it's identified it, it will say successfully identified. As you can see, we have a new window from Red Snow here. We can click OK to that, and then let's go back. And then from here, we can click Jailbreak. All right, now as you can see, we have the option to install Cydia. That's what we're going to check. That's all we need to check. And then from here, we're going to click next. And now it's just telling us to make sure that our device is both plugged in and powered off. And then it's going to tell you how to enter DFU mode once you continue. However, what we're going to do is enter DFU mode ahead of time. All you have to do is plug your device into your computer via your USB cable, and then simply hold down the home and power button together for a total of 10 seconds. Once that 10 seconds is up, you can go ahead and let go of the power button and continue holding the home button for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. Now, once that time is up, it will automatically bypass that screen in red snow and it will continue through the jailbreak process. All right, now as you can see, it's just downloading the jailbreak data to the iPhone right now. And it's saying that this process is done, everything else will take place on your device, just leave it plugged in even though it says it's done. All right, and finally it's moved past that stage in the scrolling text portion of the jailbreak where it said, please wait, again, just leave your device alone, it will proceed.
All right, now this stage actually takes the longest moving applications. Again, just be sure to leave your device alone. It will continue past this step once it's finished. All right, now that it's moved on to installing bundles, the iPhone should reboot here shortly. All right, now we're just waiting for it to normally boot back up, which shouldn't take long at all. So while we're waiting for this to do its thing, let's go ahead and close out of Red Snow and let's reopen it. Again, if you are on a Mac or an OS X based computer, what you have to do is right click or control click onto Red Snow. And once you do that, you can click open from there. Now this step is crucial. Again, we do have to close out of Red Snow and then reopen it. And then we'll actually be able to boot tethered. So now that our iPhone is back up here, let's go ahead and slide to unlock. Now you will notice that you don't have anything on your device yet. That's because again, we have to boot tethered. So let's go ahead and do that right now inside of Red Snow, which we just closed out of and then reopened. So I'm just going to set this iPhone down for a second. And then we're actually going to go through the simple process of booting tethered. So what we need to do from here is go to extras and then select IPSW again, and you will get this selection window. We can go ahead and point it towards our iOS 6.0 IPSW, not 6.0.1, again, because we're tricking Red Snow because it hasn't been updated yet. So let's go ahead and click OK to that. And then from here, let's just select the top option, which is just boot. And you'll actually have to do this every single time your device powers off and you wanna bring it back up or you wanna turn it back on with full jailbreak functionality. Again, once we install the semi-untethered or the semi-tethered jailbreak after we complete this, you will be able to turn it back on. However, you won't be able to use everything on your device. And we'll get into that more towards the end of this video. But like I said, now that we've selected our IPSW, we've hit just boot. Now we have to plug our device into our computer, which we've already done. We haven't even unplugged it. It's just been the same. So now that it is plugged in and we're ready to go, we're going to enter DFU mode. Again, it just gives you the same screen where it's telling you to both plug in and turn off your device, and then it will tell you how to enter DFU mode. But we can do that ahead of time, just like before. Hold down the home and power button together for a total of 10 seconds. Now, once that 10 seconds is up, you can go ahead and let go of the power button and continue holding the home button for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. Now, DFU mode is a black screen, so you won't notice any difference. It will just automatically bypass it inside of red snow if you've done it correctly, which in this case, of course we have. So it's just going to go through the process and patch it with the Lime Rain exploit, and then it will turn back on and we will have Cydia. All right, and another thing, as you can see over here inside of Red Snow, it says it's done. So this is just going to take the normal time it would take to actually reboot your device. So this part shouldn't take long at all.
All right, and there we go. Maybe a little bit longer than it would take to normally turn on, but we have our iPhone 4 up now. So let's go ahead and slide to unlock and scroll over. And as you can see, now we do have Cydia. It did take a while to actually come up there. I just didn't want to cut that part out so that you guys did know that Cydia does take a while to come up after you jailbreak and then even after you boot tethered. So what I'm going to do now is just open up Cydia and I'm going to again show you guys that I am indeed on iOS 6.0.1 and then we'll install the semi-tethered or the semi-untethered jailbreak. I'm just going to hit cancel to the refresh of packages there and once that's done I'm going to just scroll down and like I said down below here towards the bottom it does say that I am on an iPhone 4 on 6.0.1 one with Cydia 1.1.8. All right, so now what I'm going to do is show you guys how to install the semi-tethered or the semi-untethered jailbreak. What you need to do is go down to the bottom to manage and then sources and then edit, add, and we're going to add this source. It's thebigboss.org forward slash semi-tether. So let's go ahead and do that. Thebigboss.org forward slash semi that's s-e-m-i and then tether t-e-t-h-e-r all right and once we've typed that in we can go ahead and just click add source and it will verify the url and then it will actually update the sources And all right, now that it's done updating that data and adding that source, we can just go ahead and hit return to Cydia. And then let's go to the bigboss.org right here, forward slash semi-tether. And we can go to that source. And then the only package in there is semi-tether. We can go ahead and click that and then click on install or tap on install rather. And then go ahead and tap confirm. And then from there, we'll install the semi-tethered or the semi-untethered jailbreak. All right, now it wants us to restart our springboard, so let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I'm going to slide to unlock, and again, you won't really notice anything. You do have one icon, though, semi-tether right there. What we're going to do, though, is actually unplug our iPhone from the computer, and I'm also going to close out of Red Snow here on the computer, and I'm going to turn off the iPhone and turn it back on so you do know that this is a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak because, again, with just a regular tethered jailbreak, you have to actually plug your device into your computer and select the firmware and then select just boot option inside of Red know with this method that I'm showing you guys but because we did install the semi tether jailbreak we can go ahead and turn it on and it will boot back up with limited functionality now again I have a video that's linked down below in the more info with complete details and it actually tells you which applications won't work when you boot up into the semi tethered state so just be sure to check out that video if you want more details on the semi tethered or the semi untethered jailbreak
As you can see, we're back up here and I'm going to slide to unlock. As you can see, we can use our device now, but like I said, limited functionality, for instance, Safari will not work just right off the bat after you do that semi-tethered jailbreak. So again, we would have to plug our device into our computer and rerun that just boot option if we want most of these applications to work. But it's essentially just like your lifeline if you absolutely have to reboot your device and you're not near a computer. So I hope you guys liked this video. And of course, if you did, please be sure to rate it up, leave any comments down below in the comment section, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos, including jailbreak videos and an updated tutorial for 6.0.1. All right, and until next time, this is ICU signing out.